Let's just do it live. I'm going to talk about dueling and Harry Potter Magic Awakened while I am choosing a deck. So when you go into dueling, it can be so complicated. There are echoes to think about. There are decks that you want to build. There are companions that you want to get involved as well. And so I just briefly want to touch a few of these things. Now, if you go into the game, I think your first deck is going to look something along the lines of uh, you're going to have Incendio, you're going to have Inflatus, you're going to have a troll. And I, actually, I have that image, so I'm going to just put that on the screen right now. This is pretty much a guarantee as to what your deck is going to look like as soon as you get one and Harry Potter Magic Awaken. And this isn't just to, like, you know, kind of push you into a corner and force you to learn specific cards. It's actually to help teach you the game, which is phenomenal. And I couldn't. I couldn't be more thankful for that. However, it can be overwhelming. It can be a lot to think about, especially when, you know, you get close to 100 cards. I don't even have all 100 cards unlocked, and it's complicated. It's difficult to to choose and to decide, like, well, what kind of deck am I going to do? Am I going to do Hagrid or Neville or Bellatrix or whatever? So my first piece of advice is to take the deck that they give you and just play with it for a little while get to know those cards get to know how you can use them in tandem get to know how you can play with them then when you unlock more echoes you can do things like configure a deck so for example i know and sometimes this is a bug this is fun this is a fun bug that they do where if i use a luna deck i need spell casting cards because spell casting cards equal more summons that's just how luna works and again you can check out the Echo videos if you want to do that. A card will be up above in the right corner. But the thing that you want to be focused on in dueling specifically is control. If you can stay in control, if you can be in control, you will win the match. Now, what I mean by that is you have to decide once you've decided, like, for example, let's say I want to play this Luna deck. They're going to be sending other creatures at me. They may be sending, um, you know, Death Eaters at me if they're playing a Bellatrix deck. I have no idea who I'm about to face, nor do I have any idea what kind of deck they are running, what kind of echoes, what kind of build they have there in their decks. It's completely blind, and I have no stinking clue <laughs> what's about to happen. So going in with a plan, going in with a game plan and knowing exactly what you want to do, to overwhelm them with summons is my preferred method with the Luna deck because that's kind of the whole point of her. Good news, I'm going up against somebody with a 10 win streak. So let's see how this goes. Let's see if I maintain control or if I lose control in this duel. And I'll try to be as open and verbal as I'm doing all of this. There's a lot to process mentally. All right, so I'm going to get them inflated. And then Incendia, that's a good combo to get some decent damage. So they're running a Dobby deck with an evil aura. Probably means that they're running, um, if I had to guess, Dobby Avada Kedavra deck. And they're just wasting all of their moves for some reason. So I used Accio to pull them into Cassandra's little area of effect here because I don't know what this, yep, yeah, that's exactly what I thought was going to happen. So they're using Nevada Kedavra, and the way that that card works is if they hit someone four times, or if they get four kills with Nevada Kedavra, then their next one is an instant kill. So what I need to do, what I need to do is try to overwhelm them as best I possibly can. So they're trying to get e easy kills. They missed. They missed on the double Akami, or they didn't miss. Sorry, they hit one of the Akami. And I'm going to light him up with fire so there my knights can go. And the thing is, with Luna deck, this can be really tricky if it's not properly managed. Okay, so that didn't count as a kill because my army men are too strong. That's good news. Dodge the Accio. Threw down an Akami of their own. As long as I can provide them with enough targets that they can't get all of me. And by all of me, I mean all of myself and my my little dronies. 
So here's what I'm going to do then. Norwegian Ridgeback has extremely high burst damage. Oh, what terrible luck. So here's what happened. They tried to use the Vada Kedavra on one of my Akamis, but they they despawned. They despawn because they have a time. <laughs> that sucks. So this person's trying to charge up their Crucio. Meanwhile, they're not doing any damage to me. Their literally only strategy is to try and kill so they can get an instant kill. This is what you would call... I don't know this person, but this is what I would call a brain dead deck. Like, they don't have any other cards or any other strategies. They literally only want to, to get Avada Kedavra... So they could so they can kill me with one shot. It's very lazy. Don't get me wrong though, if you're fighting a summon deck, it's great. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna continue to summon. I'm gonna continue to try and overwhelm. I'm gonna continue I mean like you can see all of the things that are in this side. I have complete control at this point. Now as long as I can keep this person from killing me in one shot. So there you go. There's the uh, there's the aura here. All right. So as soon as I see the green charge, as soon as I see the green charge from Avada Kedavra, I'm gonna try to drop down. Oh, he missed. Wow, he had a chance to beat me and he missed. So. That was actually pretty straightforward. Not that complicated. They had literally one objective. Their objective was to try and kill me with Avada Kedavra and to kill all of my summons so they could charge it up and get me a one-shot kill, basically. That was the whole strategy. That wasn't, that wasn't very tough. All I had to do was continue to play my game exactly what I wanted to do, which is kind of exemplary of the control that I've spoken about. Go in with a game plan. Go in knowing exactly what it is that you want to do. And especially with a Luna deck, it's pretty easy. Cast spells, get summons. Cast spells, get summons. And once you start to overwhelm, even the best of players can't do anything about it. I'll tell you right now, in Harry Potter Magic Awaken the first week, certainly will be easy to overwhelm people because they're not used to the game. If you get a Luna Echo early and global, whew, watch out. All right, so second, this will be the last one that I use just as another example because I don't want to do like a 30-minute video of me explaining all of this because a lot of this is going to be experience. You're going to learn things yourself. I start out with a big burst damage to see what they're going to do. Okay. Cassandra down in the middle. Pull you into my storm. Get some cheap damage that way. Cassandra's extremely strong, no matter what level you're playing at. She's really, really good for burst damage, especially if they're trying to throw a bunch of summons in here. It's just not going to work. Incarceris, pull him in. I'm going to use the Thunderbird for the shield for the Fwooper because the Fwooper just absolutely wreak havoc. They're pretty good. I think that they're one of the better... Um, undervalued cards as far as like summons in the Luna deck. I don't think that they're a good four cost card, but we'll talk about that later. All right, Ventus to keep this guy away from me. And I'll drop an Akami. And you can see like, I'm just playing my game. I'm not even worried about attacking my enemy and look at where their health is. Look at where my health is. I'm doing fine. They're not doing so great. Okay. So like my strategy is doing really well and all I'm doing is just is just playing my game. I'm not even looking at them. I'm not bothered with them. Summons and spells, summons and spells. I mean, you could technically argue that this is also sort of brain dead, but it, it requires a little bit more consideration than the Avada Kedavra deck does. Gosh, the freaking Matagot are so annoying. They really are. If you play against like a Flitwick deck with Matagot, ugh. It's one of the worst. Oh yeah, here we go. This is what we call the Game Ender. All of the summons are going to get sucked into the suitcase. And there goes the Beasties.
All right, so this one's pretty much over with. I am about 50% health. They've got, you know, not 50% health. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and throw out my uh, Ron Weasley, because why not? Expelliarmus, and this should be game over. There it is. GG. So what I want to tell you is it's not like I'm I'm not that good of a player. I'm really not. The one thing that I do is I stick to my guns. I stay in control. I try to game plan and know what I want to do. And as soon as I'm able to do that, it's so much easier to win. Just stick to your game plan. Don't worry about their health. Don't worry about what they're trying to do. And you will be in such good shape. I hope that this was helpful. If you have any questions uh, that actually regard cards or anything like that, please feel free to drop them down in the comments below. Or you can join the Discord and ask me directly. I'm active in there all the time. Definitely drop by. I'm going to be putting out more guides. This is a very 101 type class. Okay? Let me call it even a class. But pick an Echo. Pick some cards that work with the Echo well. Learn them. Use companions that are good and helpful to you. I mean, like, this is just very, very basic information that I'm giving you. It's not fantastic whatsoever. Grop is powerful. The Frey Twins are powerful early game because they are a couple of forces to be reckoned with. Any of these companions are going to be helpful. Even uh, Lottie giving you more energy. Daniel giving you more uh, health. Getting more power on your primary cast from Kevin or Ivy disappearing a creature entirely super powerful early game having the ability to control the field follow through with your game plan and you will be ready to dominate in harry potter magic awaken i hope this was helpful if it wasn't let me know down below and i will talk to you in the next video until then peace